Steph, can you talk a little bit of, um, about how Sean Livingston's mid-range game helps open up the floor and space for you and Clay? Um, I mean, that's obviously his comfort zone and where he, you know, gets most of his shots when he's able to, you know, get that penetration. Um, most of the time when he's in that position, um, if the defense doesn't collapse, then he's getting wide open looks and he's got a you know comfortable range. And if he, if they commit to him and we're spaced out on the wings, you know he's done a good job as well. And we're both on the all three on the floor at the same time, finding one of us if we're open. Um, but it also just gives the defense a, something a different look to have to deal with. Uh, they guard me and Clay a different way than they would guard Sean, and so you have to make those adjustments in game and know you know. I guess what their game plan is going into it, and it's it's as a defender, you know it's how hard it is to kind of make those in-game adjustments on the fly, and so you try to use that to our advantage. Over here on the left side, David, just raise your hand. Steph, just wondering if anything feels different once you win a championship whether it's a burden being lifted or a confidence being instilled in a team that allows a team to play with more looseness and play maybe better or play at a higher level than they did the year they won the championship. Have you noticed any of that this year? Um, I mean, over the course of the regular season, we obviously had ultimate confidence in ourselves because we had won and all that went into winning a championship last year. Um, the journey's obviously been different. We've talked about that along the way. Mm -hmm. Getting back to the playoffs, I think it's there's a, new, there's a different kind of pressure that you feel because you have you know the feeling of winning and, and you want to get back there. But there's also um, a sense of expectation knowing, you know, as you get through each round, how to deal with the emotions, the the environment of the playoffs and themselves when you, you know, whether you're at home or on the road, um, the hoopla that's around it, and especially when you get to the finals. Um, yesterday was uh, a very good feeling, kind of knowing the schedule of the day and and practice and how we're, how to deal with it. And and once the you know the, the ball dropped, I didn't feel. Um, as much anxiousness as last year. Um, it still, it obviously means as much, if not more, this time around, but you just have a certain sense of, of comfort knowing that you've been through it before. And it, at the end of the day, it's just basketball um, and, and going out and having confidence in what you do. Okay, see, you think that falling back on that may have helped you guys get through those three games? For sure. Um, it wasn't any panic. It was just understanding the the, this, the the moment. I mean, we were down two one um, twice last year and, and had to rattle off three straight. Granted, it wasn't facing elimination, so it was a little different. But you, the more experiences you go through, I think you know the better you are you are at handling anything that's thrown at you. Um, we obviously had to you know play well and and figure it out quickly to get to the finals. But we, we, we relied on the experience for sure. Over on the right side, one. Steph, is there ever a time like yesterday when the second unit's rolling like that and uh, you're sitting there next to coach and your time to come in the game is coming up, do you, are, do you have any input with Coach Kern saying, man, let them roll, they're, they're doing their thing, I don't want to get in and perhaps ruin some momentum that this second unit has going? Like, what's your role in that situation? Um, there have been times where I've kind of given them a look, like, because I'm a competitor, I want to go out there and play. But that's just me being selfish at that point, trying to get back out there. You understand that when uh, the talent that we have on the bench, um, when they're out there playing like they did last night, I mean, yeah, why, get in the, why stop the, the momentum? Why get in the way of that? There's going to be a time where I get back out there on the floor, me, Clay, whoever's, um, you know, you're in the position usually to close out games, we can get out there and, and still have an impact on it. But all year we've relied on on our depth. Um, 
the minutes that you know we logged in the regular season is because of of you know how well our bench can can obviously you know protect leads but also build them um like they did last night so it, it's fun to to kind of see them bring the energy and do what they do mark steph uh, watching your uh ritual last night before the game and ending with the tunnel shot you you asked me about that the other day yeah yeah i said it didn't have an effect on my shooting i might have been wrong <laughs> Oh for five last night. <laughs> Notice that. You know, Steve talked about the little kid in you and you kind of like punch the ball from three-point range to try to get it in. You know, what is it about that tunnel shot that brings out the little kid in you? And from all the crazy difficult shots you take in a game, where does that rank in terms of degree of difficulty? Honestly, it's not. It's a tough angle, but it's not that difficult a shot. Um, but I just... Ever since college, I always tried crazy trick shots in practice and in games, just having fun. When you're in the gym all the time, you got to find little things that that keep it fun. So, um, yeah, that's kind of been a part of just my personality and things like that. And it's uh, kind of morphed into a, a really strict uh, routine for home games. If you had to guess, what would be your guess on what percentage of those shots you've made in your life from the tunnel probably like 15 <laughs> percent it's not good at all it is, it is a fun moment when it when it does go in so um I, I get a hot streak going every once in a while but then it'll be nice like last night where you go for five and don't need to waste any more time out there shooting them last two on this side and then in the back right staff uh, jet from the world journal you know, uh, the Cavs just scored seven three point uh, last night compared to the play in Eastern games. It's not good. Do you know what's the reason? Just because of Warriors' defense or they had a bad light? Uh, I mean, I think our defense has a lot to do with it, just being aggressive, trying to follow the game plan. Um, they're obviously a team that shoots the three very well and can get high at any time, but the key is trying not to let them get open looks and, and find a rhythm. So. From the from the jump, you want to be able to try to impact, you know, their offensive of rhythm by not having any miscommunication, having great rotations on the on the perimeter, um, and contesting shots. We could do all that to, on Sunday, and they could make everything. It's just that's how basketball it is. Is obviously it's a, it's, a, it's a make or miss league, but um, you know our defense. The energy and kind of uh, focus was 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 pretty good yesterday, and uh, if we can repeat that and take it even up another notch, um, that's when we're at our best. Last one, back right. Hi, Steph. Uh, I was wondering if you received the jersey that Lionel Messi had sent you, and if you uh, would like to meet him. Uh, now he's playing uh, the Copa America here. And if you'd like to invite him to see one of the of your games, oh, for sure, it'd be an honor to have him come watch us play. Uh, I've never seen him play in, in person, but um, would enjoy that treat as well. And obviously, I never met him in person, but we we did exchange jerseys for the Instagram um, f follower milestone. So um, mine's still in the mail. I'm waiting for it though. Thank you.